Like the 2.6 million people who saw this footage of Safe Haven Marines Thunderchild 2 powering through huge breaking waves two years ago, I became fascinated with this outstanding quadruple engined 22 meter high speed powerhouse of a boat. Thunderchild 2 features an ingenious hull fusing an asymmetrical catamaran with a wave piercing monohull to produce a hull that integrates the dynamic and transverse stability of a catamaran with the head sea capabilities of a deep V monohull. And recently I had the pleasure of visiting this fantastic vessel as she prepares to attempt a record breaking trip from London to Monaco. Before we take a look inside Thunderchild 2, let us see her in action as she battles big waves off the Atlantic coast of Ireland. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because nearly 85% of you who watch this will forget to. Thunderchild 2 has a length overall of 23 meters, a beam of 5.2 meters, and a lightship displacement of 24,000 kilograms. She features a fully cored FRP hull and superstructure in vinyl Easter and e glass. Kevlar and carbon fiber are incorporated as reinforcement within the structure, which has been over-engineered to provide the necessary strength for heavy weather operation and designed to a 6G operational envelope. During her development, Thunderchild 2 underwent comprehensive sea trials, during which she reached a maximum speed of 54 knots, thoroughly tested in a range of trials in varying sea states right up to extreme conditions of force 10 and in 6 meter seas. Thunderchild 2's hull also incorporates twin transverse steps, which at higher speeds reduce the wetted area on the hull bottom as well as increasing lift and stabilizing running trim. Thunderchild 2 is fitted with quad Caterpillar C8.7 650 horsepower engines coupled to France Helikis SD3L surface drives in a staggered arrangement. This setup provides the desirable redundancy for her planned various record attempts, as should one engine fail, she will still be able to maintain her planing speed. She is fitted with an 8,000 litre fuel capacity tank, allowing for a 750 nautical mile range at her cruising speed of between 32 and 40 knots. Of course, this range depends on her fuel load. She can alter her LCG to prevailing sea conditions via a fuel transfer arrangement to a 2,000 litre forward ballast tank. Thunderchild 2 also has four ZF325 two-speed gearboxes. Her trim control is achieved via her four Humphrey interceptors. Whilst I was on board, her engines were not fired up, but the crew assures me that those straight exhausts create a noise that will resonate with anyone who has a love for all things marine engineering related. As you can see, she does not have any rudders. The drives move two-dimensionally, side to side and up and down. Side to side gives the boat its steering and the up and down movement is for the engine loads and to get the optimum speed. The boat does not have trim tabs as it is incredibly stable. Should any ropes find themselves wrapped around the props, then the crew have access to this large blade that is fitted to a very long handle. Now, before we take a look inside, let us have a look at some of her external features. 
Her open bow is one place you would not want to be should you find yourself out at sea in heavy sea stays. One of the great things about this boat is that you can access all of the main compartments internally, so there is no need to go out onto the upper deck whilst at sea. Forward of the reinforced glass that makes up the windows to the pilot house is this deflector, which helps to minimize the force from the seawater against the superstructure as you plow through big waves at high speed. And no, these are not missile tubes. Instead, they help the boat lift out of the water while she's on the way by sucking in air as it flows over her deck and forcing the air under her hull. Just make sure that you don't fall down them. After the FLIR and CCTV camera, we find another retractable deflector that helps to keep the radar mast safe from big waves. On the Thunderchild 2's radar mast, we find two communication antennas and two static array radars, each with a range of between 20 to 35 nautical miles, depending on atmospherics. Note also the large LED spotlight. Now join me as I head inside and take a look at Thunderchild 2's impressive helm station. For me, this helm station is a dream. It is packed out with the latest technology and of course is configured for high speed rough weather transit. This vessel is also fitted with bow and stern thrusters and check out those engine controls for the four Caterpillar engines. All of the main controls and display monitors are within easy reach of the helm. It is worth mentioning as well that all of the electronics have built-in redundancy. So if one circuit fails, there is another that will keep power running to the boat's essential systems. Behind the helm is a dedicated station for the engineer who can keep a close eye on the vessel's four engines whilst she races to her next destination at 54 knots. And one thing you won't have to worry about as you race over the waves is your back, thanks to these incredible seats. Thanks to these military spec shock mitigation seating supplied by the Canadian company Shocks. And check out how amazing the helm station looks when it is lit up at night. As you'd expect with an offshore powerboat, safety is at the centre of this vessel's operation. It is great to see a detailed muster plan located where the crew will be spending the majority of their time. Located to starboard in the pilot's house is the vessel's fire protection panel and controls for the fire suppression system. Being aboard a Type 22 frigate when there was a fire in the engine room, I cannot tell you how important it is to practice your fire and muster drills. As you would expect with a vessel of this type, her accommodation is set up in a practical and no-nonsense way. Having said that, there is still plenty of room aboard for her crew of up to 10 people. And let's face it, who wouldn't want to be a member of Thunderchild 2's crew? During my maritime career, I have been aboard warships of all different nationalities, lifeboats and border force vessels. So I still find the accommodation areas aboard Thunderchild 2 very inviting and comfortable. A long distance trip aboard this vessel would not be for the faint-hearted, but that is one of the things I love about this boat. It rewards its crew with one-of-a-kind experiences rather than luxury and opulence. And if you were wondering what is behind this watertight door, then wonder no more. It leads into a chain locker that is also used to stow fenders. In here you will also find an escape hatch that leads out directly onto the main deck. I really enjoyed my afternoon aboard Thunderchild 2 and I want to thank Alex for showing me around. It was not only an honour to meet Thunderchild 2's owner, but it was also great to meet Tristan, aka Super Yacht Captain. I have been a fan of Tristan's YouTube channel for many years and it was great to meet him in person. He really is genuinely a nice guy. If you are watching this video before 0400 hours British summertime on the 27th of July, then head over to 54knots.com where you could win a chance of a flight for two from a European city and spend two nights in Monaco plus a trip on Thunderchild 2. All you have to do is get out your calculators, maps, weather forecasts and tide tables 
and start calculating how long you think the journey will take. Each entry costs £10, with all of the proceeds going to Great Ormond Street Hospital. Good luck, and make sure you check out the Super Yacht Captain's YouTube channel for the post-record attempt video of the voyage. I'm actually hoping to get some drone footage of Thunderchild 2 as she heads east along the Thames towards the North Sea en route to Monaco. If I do get the footage, then I'll upload it to my hobby channel, Nomadic Drone. I will leave a link to the channel in the video description. I would just like to say a huge thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel. YouTube's channel membership is basically their version of Patreon. If you'd like to find out more about becoming a member of my channel, then I'll leave a link in the video description. If you've got access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to send me a DM via my Instagram account or send me an email to john at yacht-boy.com. If you've made it this far, then thanks for watching. Please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see it. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos and playlists. So until next time, fair winds and following seas.